Hi everyone, I'm Irina and welcome to episode 6 of Stories with the Shepherdess. So today I thought that I could do flock talk whilst working on a very important bit of shepherding and shearing and that is the skirting process. What skirting means is assessing the fleeces and pulling away any bits that are not quite as desirable. So I'm pulling away the bits that are a bit gross, maybe a little bit full of poo or other such things, shorter than usual. Um, if you are interested in knowing more about skirting, you can watch my little chat in a video that I'll link to. Um, so anyways, flock talk. So obviously we have sheared our sheep. Now the next step is to skirt, which I am doing, and then we shall take it to the mill and have it be made into our next batch of flock yarn. We did get 22 fleeces off this shearing. It was very lovely, um, much quicker than we had anticipated. It was only about six hours of work, which was nice. So we are excited. Our Wensleydale, any of our long wools we're going to still keep with the DK weight that we usually do. It just works best, it's the most versatile. People seem to respond to it the best. But with our Shetland, we're a little bit on the fence about stuff. We don't know if we wanna do what we have done traditionally, which would just be a DK weight, or if we wanna mix it up a little bit. So this is Graham's fleece, which I'm working with now. He loved, loved, loved getting into the vegetable matter. So we're actually not going to have his fleece processed. We are going to keep it and process it ourselves because it's just filled with too much VM to make it worth to make it worthwhile sending it to the mill. So what else is new with flock talk? Well, for example, we got two new Wensleydales at Rhinebeck. This meet Agatha and Monica. They came to us from Shepherd's Lane Flock out of Oregon. They've got the most luxurious fleeces. So they are both um, mid 80% Wensleydales. We find that actually the lower percentages fit the phenotype of the Wensleydale more. Um, and I'm not talking like the 50 percenters, but the kind of mid 70s to 80s, low 90s, they fit the phenotypes better, which means they look more like the English Wensleydales, which is really what we're going for, as well as on the side of the genetics. So this fleece is gorgeous. So we're very excited to add Monica to the black flock and Agatha to our main flock. I am just going to get back to working with this beautiful fiber. Look at this. I don't know if you can even see it. It's gorgeous. Hey everybody. Um, so since I filmed that skirting bit for my flock talk, we did actually drop off fleeces at the mill. We just decided to do DK weight with everything. Um, like I said, we were on the fence with the Shetland fleeces and we talked with our mill owners that we work with and they just thought the DK was probably the best option based off of um, how the fleeces looked when we dropped them off. They could have done fingering, but like they said, like DK is so versatile and so it's it's really awesome that we're on the same page with the mill that we work with because that's a super important bit of raising sheep. So we're going to have DK weight everything and we're going to have a little bit of roving from Dot, our Shetland U, which is going to be awesome. Very excited to get that back. So we do have another batch of Lester long wool as well that's coming our way. We've got one at a one mill and one at another um, just to kind of break it up and you know because one mill spins it a little bit stronger which is quite nice and the other one spins it a bit more like our Wensleydale which is also nice too and so we really like working with the two different mills because they give you slightly different products which really really makes a difference in the long run. So that's kind of it for flock talk. We've moved sheep around quite a bit. Um, we've got everyone broken up into breeding groups. We've moved some sheep out. We've brought some sheep in. Like 
um, Agatha and Monica, as I was talking about earlier. Um, so there's just been a lot of reorganization on the farm. We are off the grid, so we're back to that time in winter farming where we're breaking water buckets and we're, oh man, mud, just mud everywhere. Um, but we, we're getting um, wells drilled hopefully very very soon which will make um, dealing water a bit less treacherous um, and so we're really looking forward to that. We're crossing our fingers we'll have it in the new year or before the new year because they were meant to go in before Thanksgiving and then it was too wet so then we had to do after Thanksgiving and now it's too wet still so we'll see but we're excited we're gonna get two wells uh, drill. We're going to have one at what we call our Amanda barn. It's the barn we got from Prada Delana. It's our main barn where we keep everything um, and the sheep can go in it. And then we're getting another one drilled uh, at the U end of it um, for our big barn. That's where like the ducks and chickens and all them live on that side of the farm. So we're excited. We're moving forward. So that's kind of the end of flock talk. So moving on to what's on my needles. So currently I only have a few things on my needles. Um, the Willapa Cardigan by Annie Rowden. I knit it out of Ginger Four Ply Mass of Mayhem. Um, and so Ginger Twist Studios is out of Edinburgh. I picked up the yarn this past summer whilst we were on holiday and I really enjoyed knitting with it. You know, I love, love, love long wools um, and this was no exception. So I'm calling this What's on My Needles because I'm still working on the pockets. We are packing up yarn trying to be good and like realize what's in our stash and I have misplaced <laughs> and misplaced so I've got half I've got one pocket finished half another and I have to block it yet so it's still what's on my needles but it's awesome I wore it and it's hanging out and all and it was just like the coziest lightweight cardigan ever so I'm really excited for that um <clears throat> I'm also working on the Far Hills hat it's designed by Jared Flood and it's knit out of an exciting new yarn that we have coming in from the UK it's Dalton Border Lester Air and Weight um, I'll talk a little bo bit more about the Dalton Border Lesters at the end under shop happening I've got two very big announcements and that is one of them. So um, yeah, so we've got the Dalton Border Lester yarn and the Far Hills hat and so that's really a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Golly, what have I finished? Since the last time I chatted with you, we have released, I say we because we provide yarn support, um, Rachel Brockman, um, a fantastic independent knitwear designer based out of North Carolina who designed our Gretna jumper, has released a Gretna hat. And so I finished a Gretna hat out of our Lester Long Wool. I also have finished a Marley Cowl by Pam Sluter. And that's knit out of Yorkshire Medley in the colors Molten and Busby Harvest. And I think that is it. I finished some other things like some Christmas ornaments for our open studio ornament exchange and such, but those are kind of like the two really big ones. I've got um, the Willowbrook cardigan is almost finished, so it's kind of bouncing between. But those are really all that I've got done. It's been really crazy busy, which is fine. That is, um, <clears throat> let me finish objects. I'm sorry, this is like the fastest stories with the shepherdess ever, but I kind of just want to get on to shop happenings. So we went to Rhinebeck. It was lovely. We had a great time. We're super excited to go back for next year. Golly. So, okay, Erna's first Dalton Border Lester. We are pleased to announce we are the first United States stockists of the Dalton Border Lester wool out of England. Um, Ellie is a shepherdess of Border Lesters over in Yorkshire, and she has the most gorgeous yarns. So we currently have her four ply and her Aran weight in stock. Um, we plan to keep on expanding and get in their DK and more colors of their four ply when as we keep progressing through the beginning of next year already <laughs> um it's gorgeous it's like nothing like the long wools that we work with but it still has that long wool integrity and so it's like a really good wool and i'm super super excited to be working with ellie she's awesome um we have a mutual friend adrian who lives in america but spends her time in england quite a bit as well and she kind of set this whole thing up so thank you adrian um and it's just a really fantastic yarn. So I'm gonna post the info down in the show notes um, and you're also more than welcome to take a trip out to the shop to check it out. I will have my Far Hills hat finished by then and it's a fantastic sample showing off the really beautiful qualities of this wool. 
So there's announcement number one. Announcement number two is we are announcing our very first biennial Flying Fibers Weekend Workshop. So what is the Flying Fibers Weekend Workshop? Well, Jerry and I, my mom, um, we had so much fun taking people on a whirlwind adventure to Scotland, but we realized we can't do that every year. It's so hard leaving the farm um, and leaving this place. So we thought, well, let's do the travel every other year. That will give people time to recover, and it'll also give us time to recover, and it won't feel like we're just like banging out these trips. So we still want to keep the workshops going. We loved the concept of just constantly either learning new skills or falling in love with a skill that we maybe have known but we've forgotten that we loved until we took that lesson with an instructor in Scotland. Um, so we're holding a workshop weekend, a weekend workshop. We're very excited to announce for our very first Flying Fibers weekend workshop. We will be having Rachel Brockman of North Carolina and Pam Sluter from Rhode Island come and meet at Marietta, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, which is right down the road from the shop. Um, it's about a 15 minute drive from where we are in Landisville and it's about 20 minutes from the farm and we're very excited to be hosting weekend workshops. We'll have about um, 16 hours of instruction. Um, we've got Rachel and Pam teaching classes and then Jerry and I will be holding mini workshops throughout the weekend and we've rented this old fa farmhouse mansion from the 1840s and we're just so excited to be kind of like hunkering down and having a relaxing but immersive weekend with customers either new or old and you know we're just really excited so we're putting this call out to anybody. Um, details are on our website. We don't have registration open yet because we still have to meet with a few people just to finalize last minute things. That is our announcement. Um, if you have any more questions, we have a contact form on the weekend workshop page on our website. So feel free to shoot me any sort of questions there and I'm happy to answer. More details will be rolling out as we go into the new year about this event. But I just wanted to say like, we would love for you to join us. Um, we're so excited. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house. They've got like comfortable accommodations, wonderful homemade meals. Jerry and I will be taking some of the lunches while the owner of this um, the mansion that we're renting will be doing the breakfasts and it's just going to be a wonderful time. We're excited to be hosting an event like this. Oftentimes if we were either like only working or we're like only hanging out and so it'll be nice to have like a good like immediate interaction with with customers like that so we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you if you decide to join us and like I said please watch for registration information that will be coming out in the next few weeks so that is our two big announcements. We also just want to thank Ann Weaver for coming out for our second Flying Weaver event. It was a hit as always. And if you go to our website, The Flying Weaver 3, those details are out now. So we're bringing her back for a full weekend this time. And we've got a full day class. And then we also have the two half day class options as well. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, go to our contact form on the website. It's just like an exciting year. I can feel it in my bones. 2019 is going to be the year. Um, I think I say that every year and like it always exceeds my expectations, but this is going to be great. <laughs> I also just wanted to say if you're looking for any last minute gifts, we still have a few of our flock greeting cards available. They feature moments from the farm between a lamb looking for a scratch, Lester Long Wolves looking to say hello, checking out commotion in the barnyard, and a sweet portrait of Athena, our old black Wensleydale ewe in the snow. Those are also available on our online store. All right, everybody, I hope you have a lovely rest of your holiday season and a happy new year. I am signing off until 2019. I promise I will be better at regularly posting as I am no longer a university student and so this is like my full-time gig. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a happy new year. Look for more information rolling out in the next few weeks, like I said, and we will see you at Vogue, New York. Bye! Hey everyone, thanks so much for following along with our video podcast, Stories with the Shepherdess. If you would like to stay updated, you can follow us on Instagram, at Flying Fibers, or you can follow either of our Facebooks, 
Flying Fibers for our yarn shop in Landisville, Pennsylvania, or Flying Fibers Flock to keep updated with happenings on the farm. Thanks so much!